All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Small Streamer Diaries, the podcast. This is episode 16, and I am here with my friend Bit Cloud Gaming. Bit, how are you? I am good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. So, no Bit, would you do a little introduction of yourself for those that may not know you? Uh, yeah. Um, so my name is Ryan, but everybody knows me as Bit Cloud Gaming. I am a uh, YouTube content creator on YouTube. I'm also a writer uh, for lordsofgaming.net, and I am a former freelance uh, video producer uh, with IGN. Cool. So um, I met Bit probably not even a year ago, right? It's been a little while, but I don't think it's closing, been a year. Yeah, we're closing on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually discovered Bit when I moved over to YouTube from Twitch and I was looking up things on how to grow my channel and discovered vidIQ. If you don't know vidIQ, they're like this big channel on strategies and methods on growing your channel. They do a lot of stuff on like thumbnails and what to do in your videos, titles, all that stuff. And um, I started listening to the Tube Talk podcast, which Viper from vidIQ hosts. Viper is also another good friend of ours, both of ours. Right. And he had BitCloud on the podcast and I listened to Bit and you know Viper doesn't have that many gaming creators on the podcast so I was like oh hey like this relates to me I mean most of that advice is still you know applies to gaming creators but Bit was like the first one I saw on the podcast that was specifically gaming so I was like okay I'll go check out Bit and started following him on all his socials YouTube and start coming to, into his streams and stuff and he was nice enough to start following me back on stuff. And we actually did become pretty good friends. And um, let me tell you guys a story. I had so much trouble trying to get bit on this podcast, not because of him. Uh -oh. he, he, he's not the problem. It's me, to quote Taylor Swift. Um, so what happened was I started the podcast, right? And I was, oh, by the way, I was on Tube Talk myself. If you guys didn't know, I was on Tube Talk also. Um, I think in August, and it was about my move from Twitch to YouTube. So please go listen to that. Um, so anyway, so I decided to start my own podcast, which you're obviously listening to right now. And, you know, talked a bit about it. And I wanted Bit to come on, but I was I was too uncomfortable to ask <laughs> because so I here's the thing light. i don't know why she's, I, she's so scared see it's not <laughs> but it wasn't because like you're scary or anything it's just because like i just feel so uncomfortable now trying to talk to big creators to collaborate with them because yeah. ever since i started growing my own channel i see so many creators like bigger creators so okay so i know bit considers himself a small channel but to you know me and others of my size he is a big channel he's at almost 11,000 subscribers now on YouTube and so you know to us you are a, a very large channel and people of your size you know I see people of my size trying to get your attention all the time like spamming links everywhere DMs like trying to just get attention from you and I'm so so worried I'm like one of those people that's just trying to use people I had a whole other episode with my friend um excellent flex on this topic is like how do you know if people are just like using you or not and i don't know just because just since ever since i got into content creation i've just been become like very hyper aware of this and it's is you know we're friends like it's not like i'm uncomfortable with you i'm just like so scared that as soon as i ask you you're like oh she was just using me like she only talked to me because she just wanted me on her podcast and then she just pretended to be friends with me until she got me on the podcast and she just wants to use me for like, I don't know, exposure and views and stuff. I know it's not uh, reasonable. I'm just telling you how I feel. <laughs> no, no, I, you, I mean, it's understandable. Um, you know, and I, like, you, like she said, uh, I don't really consider myself like this huge uh, celebrity, big time YouTuber. I mean, yeah, getting close to 11,000, been doing this for about five or four years now, uh, doing this. And mind you, this is gaming. Uh, gaming is oversaturated so it's tough to just grow a channel but like i told um you know rebecca here multiple times i mean if you want to like 
ask anybody on anything, whether it be your channel, be about politics, music, gaming, um, you know, anything of that nature, you know, you just want to build the foundation first. And what I mean by build the foundation, I'm not saying you need to have 5,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 to, to ask someone out. No, I'm talking about build a following where you're comfortable with and you and they understand you and you're at a point where, you know, you're consistent, they show up, you get the support. See all the stuff that, you know, you see big time YouTubers flex all the time, whether it be views or the crazy thumbnails. Again, we all start from somewhere that that stuff comes naturally just to, you know, being consistent. My channel um, in the midst of growing, you know, I was like, again, I cover gaming news. So I was like the most probably one of the more crazy <laughs> dudes to be quick to upload a video uh after the the snippets of news i'm talking ign would be like maybe the first person to upload and i'd be like the third person to just jump in there you know quickly edit a video and just get it out there because i knew news had to be constant but i fell off for a sense because it's like you know i moved on to other avenues outside the youtube spectrum you know i'm trying to get to uh where i go now but uh, again, it, it's really about, you know, YouTube is all about what you give in a sense, like picture YouTube as like a slot machine. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people that might be, a, that might be sound like a nightmare for those that be, you know, you know, you're feeding it, you're feeding it quarters, <laughs> and all that. but picture the quarters as time energy. You put a lot of that in there and what you get out there, there's again, might not always happen, right? That crazy big payout that you were expecting, like whether it be a video that you uh, spent five hours editing, let's just put that out there. You know, that video might not blow up, but you'd be surprised what happens when you just can be consistent with it. And, and sooner or later, those videos will start to get out there. Mm. Um, I, you know, I shared you a little trick here because, you know, this has been YouTube's little uh, thing. We talked about this with uh, Viper and um, it was Viper and God, I forgot his name, the other guy uh, that was on his stream. But, you know, YouTube shorts is like the big thing that YouTube's really trying to push. Yeah. Um, obviously, evergreen content is what they want. I mean, granted, everybody still does what they want, uploads, and they have their dedicated fans with bells and stuff enabled to watch that stuff, right? But there's no guarantee that, mm -hmm. that type of stuff's going to get out there. So the shorts thing is kind of going back to the old school YouTube format in a weird way where it just pushes it out there. And you'd be surprised how many views and clicks you get off of those things. Yeah, they're not super long. Sure, not super long, but it all adds up. You know what I'm saying? To a good result. And uh, we saw that with your channel, you know, with the God of War. You know, you wanted to jump in here from Twitch. I was like, hey, if I was you, I would do the God of War, you know, snippets. I would show yeah. off this, that, and the third. I would have fun, be a little creative for them. And I was surprised that you yeah. took the advice. And I was like, wow, okay, look at her. She's doing good. I was like, yeah, that's awesome. I can see her at 500, maybe 600K by, or 600 subs by the end of this year. So my dad, look at you. You're already damn near there at, at damn 600. So you, you're you going to get there. You just have to put in the, you know, just be consistent about it. Yeah, I appreciate that. And my God of War shorts did do the best. I mean, almost every single one of those God of War shorts got like at least a couple thousand views. Some of them got like eight to 10,000 views. Mm -hmm. So yeah, shorts, shorts, thumbs up. Okay, so, well, I'm glad that we finally got you on the podcast. Yay! <laughs> So, but, oh man, you guys should have seen me like struggling to ask Bit. Like he would be like, so Rebecca, when am I going to be on the podcast? I'm like, don't guilt me, bit. <laughs> All right. So let's get into some questions. So you did a little introduction of yourself, but let's go back even further into your history. So how did you even get started with YouTube? Why did you even want to start a YouTube channel and do videos? Um. So I always had a thing for... Like I, I, I like to express myself. I always like to give like my 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 take on things. Um, pretty much, you know, when I first like started to really look at YouTube as a potential for anything. Um, ironically, I just drew stuff on YouTube. I was like <laughs> like random clips from games. Like you know, I used to play Rocket League religiously, so I would put clips from Rocket League on there. And uh, you know, I would cheek, I would, you know, I, I didn't even care about the channel. I just was looking, I was like, eh, okay. Some people watched it, some people were watching this, whatever. I put Last of Us clips up there, those did better. And I was like, you know, 
uh, is this something I want to do? I was like, nah, you know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a journalist type of guy. You know, mm -hmm. I love to read. I love to break down stuff. And I took a chance. Um, you know, when I got a pre-built PC, I took a little chance. And ironically, these videos are so bad if you compare it to what <laughs> I do now. But again, like I said, we start from something. Mm -hmm. You know, I literally had OBS, not Streamlabs, just before Streamlabs, but we had the regular OBS. So you can see the OBS little icon on my taskbar. It is literally hitting record. And all you're seeing me do is literally read articles with a audio technica which ironically is in that closet but audio technica not this beast here <laughs> and uh i literally just i'm sitting here recording i'm sitting there going yeah you know this is happening on february you know i'm not really a fan of that blah blah but i noticed when my first ever video doing that you know me putting a voice to what i you know something i'm passionate about i gained about 10 subscribers on my first video mm -hmm. and i was like Wow, that was surprising, you know, surprising. So I was like, you know, let's try it again. Second video, I did it the next day. I was starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. I, I started off nervous as ever. You know, I was shaking literally while recording. Yeah. But like uh, the second video got another 10. And then I was like, okay, we got 20 subscribers with just two videos. Not bad. I've seen channels put like yeah. five videos out here, same format, and barely got one subscriber. So, right. okay. So I started to do that more. I started talking and um, I just, you know, before I knew it, I had about 200 subscribers within the first month of me being a content creator. And um, that right there led to me being a little bit more consistent and started taking a little bit more risk uh, with the channel. And that's the thing about it too. I, I always tell people to do if you are really getting into this particular game, never be shy to jump into the trends. Never be shy to evolve your content with what you're seeing out there. For example, a lot of the big YouTube content creators who are gaming channels, they usually have gameplay playing in the background when they're over talking, you know, they're doing the the little commentary over it, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have something like that. I mean, again, it fits the boat, it fits the 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 mold of what you're building, a gaming platform, right? If there's politics, your commentary over what you're seeing in the, you know, and and over there in Congress. So that that type of thing. So I, I literally just was like, you know, started taking notes, getting better and better at it with the mic. I started get better on software, uh moved on from the uh ridiculous software that I'd used at the time, DaVinci Resolve. Yes, I'm looking at you. And I uh, <laughs> moved on to that. And uh, before I knew it, I became so good at it that I moved on to Premiere. And I think that was probably one of the best decisions I ever did was move to Premiere Pro, uh, yep. getting away from those other platforms and just uh, taking my time and uh, building, you know, just yeah. having fun with it. Ironically, again, that's why I said you start somewhere. Thumbnails, I had no effort in thumbnails at that time. I literally just took little pictures from Google, put them on as thumbnails and that was it. Now I got to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm making my own stuff and they're better, you know, and it's like, you know, so yeah, I, I do look back at that, but that's basically, um, basically how it was uh, yeah. just, um, a long kind of, um, I guess a desire to, to want to do it. And then it just finally, I just acted on it and presto, you know, we're here yeah. uh, five years later. So were you just reading the articles word for word? in a video word, uh word for word and breaking them down like you know what does that mean you know yeah my own little take on what, on what it was you know i used to always read these uh silly little i call them hit piece articles for they or attraction articles sorry where they put these ridiculous little headings and they're like <laughs> hey this is going to happen this time you know this is a bad look this is terrible when you read it you're like yeah this guy doesn't make sense like i was that blunt basically i was <laughs> like yeah this guy clearly is got problems and he's not serious and <laughs> it was funny because i would do that all the time and then i slowly noticed i was gaining a little bit of a reputation not just with, as with the youtube thing but industry-wise some people knew me and and recognized me so when i eventually made start making moves towards getting into the gaming industry in a sense a lot of people already were familiar with my name and and what i was and surprisingly some actually followed my journey uh, for a long time and just was like hey i know that guy yeah I remember that guy he was that guy here and look at him he's doing you know better i'm happy for him so that was how that pretty much uh came yeah out. okay so it was like a almost like a reaction video to the article like an analysis reaction 
video. Mm-hmm. Like you'd read the article and then you'd say, you'd react to it. Like you say what you think about it. Oh yeah. So do you still do this? Um, I do, but I'm not as blunt <laughs> as I was before. So I do read them. I give my thoughts, I have the gameplay, I have the music playing and I just play, Hey, you know, there it is. So I do yeah. what's, what's called news recap. So it's basically what they are. I just recap it. I'll say what's up. I'll spread it around. And that's pretty much it. I'll do those type of things. Granted, I've, I've kind of slowly started getting out of those, but I might go back to them. A lot of people ask me all the time because uh, certain games I talked about before possibly returning keep getting hinted at. And ironically, I did shorts for those videos and those videos had a lot of people still hit me up. So yeah, I mean, it's possible. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I will look out for the next article video from you then. So if somebody were to start a new channel today, zero subscribers, and they want to do a gaming channel, what is the first piece of advice you would give them? Uh, Well, first thing you want to do um, to get your feet wet in a sense and the whole thing, uh, you want to definitely, well, I'm not going to sit here and say, go out here and buy all this expensive equipment. You know, I'm not going to say, go buy, you know, this right here. Mm-hmm. which is a, a road pro cash. This, this microphone was like, what, 500 bucks when I got it. I'm wow. Not saying, really? I know crazy. Yeah, I'm not saying go. I mean, buy it sounds good. Crazy, super expensive. Thank you. Uh, the super expensive stuff, but you know, um, if you really want to try it out, uh, go for it, you know, uh, take a leap for it for sure. Uh, but my advice though, to get into it is always go for the evergreen like content. A lot of people look for like, it's kind of like how you see those, uh, how-to videos, right? You see those how-to videos all over YouTube. Those are right there are the quickest way of getting people to click and get interested in there. And I'm not saying you got to be a pro with, with thumbnails. This also helps if you are putting those type of videos out there, but if you're not, it's fine. You can slowly grow into a better thumbnail maker as you get more and more passionate about what you do. That's what happened with me. So, you know, just have fun with it. But um, definitely focus on that evergreen uh, like content. Now, if you have a background, let's say you're just someone who is in journalism and you work in certain fields close to gaming, right? I say use those expertise and talk about stuff that you know for a fact uh, is more likely going to happen. Or you give those uh, predictions, you know? A lot of people love hearing takes like that. Like, what do you think is going to happen here? Um what do you think the uh, the outcome will be? Let's say Microsoft does get this Activision Blizzard thing and it does happen and they own Call of Duty. You know what I mean? What's it going to mean for XYZ down the road? You know, that that type of stuff always uh, gets the right, um, you know, the viewers. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, and, and some people might, you know, go the other route where like they start bashing content creators before it. <laughs> I've seen this. I actually did this a few times before because I had a lot, oh, a did lot you? of weird, oh, I, I was I was not I was not all I was not all sunshine and rainbows. So you see book club. But um, I used to do that back in the day. And, you know, it was it was uh, it was tough out here, you know, a lot of weird energy. But I advise y'all to stay away from that altogether. I, I again, I know it might sound weird. I'm saying that you know you might see your channel. I see your channel is at 60 sub, and that channel, you, you know, you might see a 500, and he's like talking all this recklessness. Channels like that don't go far because their their content is not original. What you're looking to make is something original. You're looking to make something that people want to see, versus what you know this type of content creator does just for a reaction. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's cool to, it's, don't get me wrong, those reaction type of videos where you're, you know, coming at, you know, as like this this weird vibe, that crazy energy, it might get you a few clicks in here and there. It might get you that type of traction, but is it worth it in the long run? No, because by the time you get to that point, when you get older and you start looking back on that type of thing, let's say you want to rebrand, it's impossible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People are here for one thing and one thing only. And that's the negative vibe that you said. You can't go out here and have something positive. You can't go and say, hey, you know what? I want to hit up Rebecca. I want to do a I want to do a gaming collab, you know, review of the industry. Nah, people don't want to see that. They want to see you go at Rebecca or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they they want to see that. And that's the that's the thing people just don't understand. Like they they're so quick for the for the moment 
instead of looking out for like the out like the they're, they're they're hyped for that crazy moment but they're not looking at the the possible outcome of yeah. what's to come not thinking long term exactly it's kind of like wrestling you want that long-term booking right that gives you a proper build-up for for future stars think about that for your youtube journey like you know everything you do is going to lead you and set you up down the road and you know it it took me um to where i where i had probably one of the coolest most surreal interviews i had in a long time on the channel um it's where i had the former um one of the former executives of sony uh, on the show he was the uh he oversaw the playstation via his name is geo corsi um such a good dude such a good dude not only mm -hmm. was i surprised that he followed me on twitter and he, he still follows me to this day and we still talk i interact but he told me flat out he's like listen how do you want to be remembered do you want to be remembered as that guy who you know did something that he was proud of or do you want to be known as that guy who just made a bunch of noise i ain't gonna lie i thought about that i was like you know mm -hmm. I kind of do want to be remembered as someone to build something that I look back on and go, yep, I was a part of that. And I did that. So yeah, that's basically what, what started the, the whole, you know, rebranding for what my channel was before uh, to what you see now. And, you know, yeah, views took a hit in a sense, because I left so much negative stuff. I left a lot of bad trends behind. But when I tell you I've been happier, I've never been happier. I've never been more blessed in a sense yeah That's how i felt every day i got on the youtube you know i came through i i'll take these long extensive breaks i have people hit me up not because they want content they're just genuinely concerned like, hey man we yet and then when i come back you know again views might be low but these are people that care about my opinion yeah and what i do and you were and thinking that, long term yeah. when you rebranded like that's i ran into the same thing i when i went to youtube from twitch and everyone was like why you're leaving twitch but you like you work so hard on your channel on twitch and yeah i did get a few regular people and i was building up followers on twitch and i had all my panels on twitch and all this stuff but mm -hmm. i was thinking long term so i i had to start over on my youtube channel zero subscribers i had nobody coming in my streams for a long time zero mm -hmm. but i was like i am thinking long term here yeah, I mean, I get this, uh, I get that question a lot, you know, like, um, you know, like, what, what do I do, you know, when my channel is not getting X amount of uh, views or X amount of attention? I just tell them flat out. I mean, literally, um, just take your time. Don't over, don't overdo it. You know, what I mean, yeah, it might, it's our soft slow because you are leaving something that people are so synonymous with you for. You know, what I mean, in this case, Twitch. A lot of people don't like YouTube in the Twitch game, you know, they like Twitch because of the way it's set up for streaming, you know, they can interact with you with those emotes and everything, mm. you know, it's how YouTube's trying to copy that. But I mean, we, we both consider and say, it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same. No. It's, it's very, it's very bare bones. It's very lazy in a sense, but uh, people prefer, you know, people, a lot, it's, it's, it's tough to get people to leave the element that they're comfortable with. That's what I'm looking for. Then to go to some unfamiliar territory to support another, you know what I mean? But make no mistake about it. If you have that loyal following, some will follow you, you know? So not all, not all, but some will follow you. Look at Dr. Disrespect, you know, when he got banned from Twitch, this dude made such an impact in the industry. All the people who pretty much did, you know, he lose on Twitch. He got back and 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 then some on YouTube, and is doing just fine. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like you know, build the audience. You know, connect with them. You know, let them know who Rebecca is. You know, let them know who you are. Those, those you are listening. You know, um, don't be afraid to open up. Don't be afraid. Don't be yeah. afraid to open up and tell them about yourself and, and what you are. I'm not saying tell them everything. No, no, don't do all that. But <laughs> don't be afraid to you know open up. Don't be you know that robotic person and they see it they're like hi how are you you know and don't no emotion no yeah you that person you know you show them that you know this is who i am in the real you know you see me in the street guess what i act the same way i'm this open person me it took me years for me it, 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 it didn't take years but it took a minute for me to really start to process that you know i i, I took my sweet time and but the guard slowly came down as i so i went with time and that just you know yeah it has to come naturally.
Yeah, I mean, people think that it's really easy to be yourself on camera, but it's not at all. Like, it just doesn't, it's just not natural for a person to be, like, filmed. So we all, you know, unless you have experience with it, we all, like, start freezing up. As soon as that record button goes on, like, we all start freezing up. Like, it's really Absolutely. difficult. And people will be like, oh, just act like the camera's not there. Just act natural. And it's like, you, you can't just do that. Like, if you're not experienced with it, you can't just, like, do that that like it's just feels very unnatural yeah and that's the funny thing about cameras too um a lot of people think you need a camera i mean my channel in the beginning for like the longest time i literally was just known as a talking avatar literally they just really so when did you start doing a face cam um about a year and some change maybe into the channel or like a a year and some change ago yeah like year years of change ago oh wow yeah, so we didn't. Yeah, that's not long at all. Yeah, we weren't really always on camera. We were all uh, kind of like uh, just f- like we were in the little Discord. You know, we we're like floating avatars with our little green lights, and people were like, "Guys, you guys are good." Blah blah. blah. And I was like, "Okay, yeah." And then uh, shot the blaze. He's the one who like talked me into. He's like, "Big clock. We need to get on camera. We need the cameras." I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> so I took it. Took a um. Took a gamble. Um, yeah, glad I kept that. So I took a gamble. Um, and again, this is a testament to this, uh, what I said earlier. You know, you don't have to have the fanciest stuff, but took a gamble. And this is during, obviously, COVID. So everybody was buying cameras. So mm-hmm. it's tough to get cameras. But, yeah. Uh, I got that right there at the start. I'd say Razor Keel, mm-hmm. $100, uh, $100 little mic. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, camera. It does have a built-in mic too, but it's a little $100 camera. I experimented with that and we got like a lukewarm reception to it. I was like, okay. Hmm. So they like the camera. Yeah. Now it's time for me to upgrade this camera. And what you see here uh, was actually sold to me by a uh, developer from oh, nice. who worked on, who worked on a PlayStation game. So that was cool. That was a yeah. highlight. So that's what this camera is for. If you wonder what this says, uh, Sony a 5100. That's what mm-hmm. this is. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, again, what I see is everything happens for a reason. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> have fun with it, man. So have fun. So I'm going to bring up Twitch again because we kind of went off there. But speaking of Twitch, you mm-hmm. are on Twitch. Like you have a Twitch account, but you don't really use Twitch, right? Um, I got to. I, there's like a <laughs> bet going on. And there's uh, a bet so going I, on. So- yeah, I had to stream Final Fantasy or the remake, so I haven't uh, been on Twitch on yeah. to stream it because I've been so busy with other games. But now I'm not really playing anything crazy, so they're like pushing me. They're like, "Okay, you gotta be a man of your word. You gotta stream." And like, oh, boy. so uh, um, more likely I will be back on Twitch uh, to stream that. But like the last, cr- I mean, I, well, the last crazy stream I did on that, ironically, I streamed a movie. <laughs> on Twitch. Okay. So I, I streamed one of the yeah. worst movies of all time, and it was just it was a funny hangout with the with the chat. But um, like yeah. So the, just... wait, the bet is that you're going to stream on Twitch? Uh, I have to stream that entire game. Okay, but you're just Twitch. choosing to. Okay, so the bet. Wait, okay, so is the part of the bet that you're going to be on Twitch, or are you just choosing to be on Twitch? No, no, no. I have to be on. I have to stream it on Twitch. Okay. On Twitch. Oh, okay, okay. But if you had a choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess what I'm asking is, like, why do you choose to stream on YouTube rather than Twitch when you have a Twitch account? Um, So it goes back to where, again, where people are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Since I've always I've always been on YouTube, I have not really been a huge Twitch jumping back and forth type of guy. So like everybody who has subscribed and has followed me and whatnot knows me for mostly my YouTube channel. Yeah. So makes sense logically to stream to YouTube because, you know, you have people who are used to you on YouTube. So in my case, you know, over 10,000 people know me and follow me there and and are connected there on on the YouTube. Keep in mind as well, this is where developers who I've reached out to or talked to are familiar with, you know, Sony in particular uh, knows what I do there. So that's why it's mostly YouTube centered yeah 
See, that always made sense to me, too, because the advice I always saw when I started streaming was like, oh, do other content on YouTube and TikTok, whatever, and then bring your audience over to Twitch. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense, because if they're if you're already I mean, and everyone's on YouTube. So say I pick YouTube to pick to, you know, create other content on. I'm like, why would people I mean, they already saw me on YouTube. So wouldn't they just stay on YouTube to watch me stream um well here's the thing i mean if you look at how popular tiktok is right there are people who are on tiktok and who had youtube channels that probably weren't really doing so well mm -hmm. that are now doing extremely well because of the tiktok videos they pretty much take and import to youtube for shorts so i was thinking again on the shorts vibe because that whole thing really works in a sense. It really, really works. Like I tested this a little bit um, with one of my, well, two of my resistance videos that everybody was saying were so good. They want more of. And on TikTok, my TikTok was doing okay. And I was like, hmm, okay. So kind of got those old school vibes. Like, damn, look at me. People just followed over this. I'm like, that's not bad compared to someone who just getting into it, you know? And that's where, you just have fun with it. Yeah. So that's where it, it doesn't hurt to have multiple avenues where people are known you for. And that's why you kind of see that now, but they put us in different categories. Now they call us influencers. You know, it's that they don't really call people content creators. They call them influencers. Um, they look at that type of stuff. You know, if you are big in the TikTok scene, or are you just big in the Twitter scene or YouTube, you know, now I have, you know, I have YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, that are, you know, have a substantial following, you know, Twitter, almost at what 4000 followers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, you know, over 10k there, right. So yeah, again, you know, you just add them all up, if you if you want to say there and say reach wise, then you can add that up and, and look at a type of thing. Yeah. So and I think that's a really good way to see it. Um, but I think most people are just streaming on twitch and all they care about is like how do i grow on twitch so then they create all this other content on other platforms and their goal is just to grow on twitch but i mean i don't know just it never made any sense to me that i was like i have to grow on all these other platforms just so i could grow my channel on one platform like i never i just never liked well, that idea a lot of people put clips on uh youtube or they'll do like um highlights you know like they have on the yeah. twitter which or the twitch where you can put like stuff in your stream you know they do that for youtube to uh save stuff because remember correctly twitch doesn't save everything you have to make sure you save it yourself as a yes, highlight correct so that's why a lot of people usually will put a lot of their content from twitch to youtube so that way they don't have to worry about missing it so a guy by the name of uh should look him up his name is avoiding the puddle one of the funniest content creators alive, but he doesn't. What well, I love about him because he's so simple. He doesn't even try as much. He's a naturally funny <laughs> guy. And that's why I say, again, just be yourself. Have fun with it because that's what he does. He's just a mm -hmm. naturally funny guy. Has fun. He plays fighter. He plays. He really streams anything on Twitch, but he's known for fighters because he usually does like commentary uh, for certain shows. People love him like that, but his name's Eris, Avoiding the Puddle. And he literally will take some of his big highlights from um, from his Twitch and put them to YouTube and, you know, funny moments. And that would be go viral in a sense. And that will add to the YouTube and the YouTube will grow. There's Twitch on top of that grow. And then the interest from the YouTube will people will go to Twitch and now will grow. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, it's yeah. like it feeds itself. It feeds itself. And then that translated into his Twitter getting even bigger so it's like it really works like that it bounces back and forth back and forth back and forth yeah so it's kind of like a machine you kind of got like again it's good at that that slot machine thing i said but it's like a thing you have to keep feeding if you really wanted to to get out there don't you know don't don't get discouraged don't worry about a video that might have you know 50 views but seven likes hey don't worry about that just keep going you'd be surprised what happens yeah you know? Something yeah. as simple as changing a title can make a video go from being not looked at to simply all of a sudden looked at. I did that with a short to test and it blew up before. So again, it, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to do that too. I used to take my stuff from Twitch and I would put it on YouTube, but it just never, I don't know. It just never took off on YouTube, but I mean, I just also feel like I don't, I don't think Twitch is, you know, very good as a company. So I just don't want to like 
yeah. be on there. <laughs> so there, there's another thing that I feel like most people like don't really consider, but I do not think Twitch uh, treats yeah. its creators very well. So I just, you know, don't, I don't want to be a creator on there. No, I don't blame you. Twitch <laughs> lost a lot of what made Twitch Twitch. That's yeah. That, like, yeah. It's not, I forgot what it was about. Twitch was about gaming. Now Twitch is about apparently hot tub yeah. streams, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. So, okay, let me ask you another question. So, what is the most common issue that you see in new creators, especially when it comes to gaming? Um, goes back to what I said before, uh, not willing to evolve, just kind of like stuck in the, in their stubborn type of ways, you know, okay. they'll like they'll going out of their format. comfort zone. Right, right. Exactly. Like you, you want to go out of your comfort zone. I know this might sound scary that I'm saying it, but it's something that you really want to do. The first thing you always want to be down for when getting into this is change because the market changes, you know, things change all the time. Like, you know, it's, it's going to happen, you know, what worked, let's say two years ago might not work in the next five, you know what I mean? You gotta be willing to, to upgrade it. So that's how, you know, you, you know, you look at my channel. I mean, it went from, like I said before, me just recording my desktop to me actually putting in actual production and me playing games on top of this, you know, breaking down, talking about things with the, you know, the news headers and, and articles being featured. It's pretty much the same thing. You want to put that type of effort into what you are um, trying to do. And that will lead itself into uh, the other uh, categories. Yeah. So what do you think about these creators that are, they're just streaming, like they're not doing any other content and they're like, oh, well, my content is streaming. Um. <sighs> You know, it works. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. It works for a lot of people. Some it doesn't. You know, some people are really, really good at just like entertaining people for hours and hours on. And that's the thing about streaming. You know, it's tough to monitor a chat. And let's say if there's something about, you know, this is like a, a show where you're talking about, you know, topics that are happening throughout the week, right? It's tough to kind of like manage a chat, manage topics, to get around to your guests but some people don't do that they just are just naturally good at entertaining uh, everybody involved and they all have fun in the midst in the midst of this with the chat so it in many ways it's good but i don't recommend that to be everybody's starter yeah again because it comes down to what you're comfortable with and you know you know how confident you are and what you do, not everybody is going to be naturally good at just like controlling a room type of vibe. Not at all. You have to grow that type of thing. You have to, you have to grow into that role. I guess basically, what I'm trying to say with mm -hmm. experience and just you uh, taking your time with it. So that's that's how I, I always say it. Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of a similar question, um, but outside of you know, people going out of their comfort zones, what is something that you wish? smaller channels did differently or paid more attention to and this could be like anything it could be like thumbnails titles just something you wish that they paid more attention to um i mean you could say thumbnails but not really thumbnails are just ice on the cake so you don't really need the <laughs> icing for a good cake if the cake's good um really just the trends notice the trends get mm -hmm. on board uh, I've seen some of the smallest creators on the planet grow and to become huge, uh, you know, uh, content creators. Like, for example, uh, Mr. Chime Time. I don't know if you ever heard of that guy. Uh, he's a guy mm -hmm. who does food reviews. He did them in his car, and now he's got over 100,000 subs. He's doing fantastic. Uh, you got dudes like General Ock, who uh, is a chef at his own store, right? He makes, like, these crazy little <laughs> sandwiches and whatnot, but the guy's channel blew up because just his, you know, how charismatic he is on camera and how funny he is on camera. So I said, again, your personality, he knows how to show that off while doing things. So all this stuff feature, like all this stuff happens and you just, you can grow it like that. You know, it just be yourself and, and get with the trends. You know, if, if YouTube's giving you a platform that when you know for a fact the platform already is kind of wonky, but they're giving you a platform where it gives you a direct feed to an audience that might really be interested in what you do 
and say, I think it's time for you to really use those tools and reach out. I'm not saying everybody should do shorts, but I do think it is worth an investment to jump into YouTube shorts and don't get discouraged. You're like, well, what about, you know, the watch time? What if I want to be a YouTube partner? All this stuff adds up. So it's not like you're missing out anything. When they say a hundred hours and, and watch time, they don't, they're not talking about one video. They're talking about total for the channel. Mm -hmm. That stuff's going to add up as you progress. So that's why I say, like, don't look at it as like a mission. Oh, I need this many subs. I need this many views. I need, or um, yeah, this many views or this amount of watch time. No, look at it as just like a fun project that can take off very, very fast. Like girlfriend reviews. Like uh, she's not even a crazy gamer, but her, her husband, well, technically her husband is, and she reviews the games because she's a journalist in a sense for him. Yeah. And they blew up over 100,000 subs. PlayStation looks at, you know what I mean? All that stuff. Like, again, the simplest ideas on YouTube can turn into some of the biggest things you can think of. Simple. Yeah. And what I like about YouTube is it's like what you said, it's everything adds up. Like, I feel like everything I do on my YouTube channel, it contributes to my growth on YouTube. So mm -hmm. shorts, even before what they were now, which they're, I think they're really great now and they're continu continuing to grow. But even before this, like, you know, the word when we, they were just starting out um, and people didn't really like them when they started because they were like, oh, they don't do anything for my channel. I'm not going to bother with them. Yeah. But there's no. Yeah. They kind of messed up your feed. And all yeah. Stuff. Like they're like, oh, they messed up my my analytics and um, the algorithm because they destroy my long form videos or something. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I post shorts and I think I get the most subscribers out of shorts. I post, you know, a video, mostly the podcast videos, and I can just let it sit there and grow. I've seen people on Twitter post screenshots of their analytics of a video that they posted. And it's like for a whole year, 365 days, it's like zero, 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 zero. And then 365 days, it just goes up. <laughs> like it was like all of a sudden, it's just like a thousand views. So YouTube's definitely like a long game, but you have to add up to it. And whereas Twitch is like, I feel like very like short term wins and then you have a bad stream, like you stream for four hours and nobody comes in, it brings down your average viewers. So that's also something I didn't like about Twitch is like, I felt like I could harm my channel on Twitch and I, I feel like I can't do that on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, you want uh, even like just to add more context to it. I mean, again, go, even going back to just something simple as rebranding, like I changed the whole name of the channel. I had people confused and <laughs> people were going, Hey, did you get hacked or something? Well, who's big cloud? I was like, Oh, that's me. Oh no, that's me. He's like, wait, but why? <laughs> why did you change the day? And I'm like, again, long-term, the long-term goal. I wanted to get away from energy, certain energy. I wanted to get away from things. See the character of big cloud is from a, uh, it's from a show I used to watch when I was younger. It's called Zoids. Uh, it's a big part of my childhood. Um, used to lose my mind to that type of stuff. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll use that character. Use that for my childhood. A little, nice little hint of me in there. And just instead of me, you know, coming on camera, acting like a certain persona, act like myself. Yeah. And ironically, it, it was, it was kind of like clockwork because as soon as i did that you know views were okay right but they were going fine they were fine right going fine um but in the midst of me doing that and getting away from that negative energy doing better um god forbid it took it took like what three months three four months and i was working with ign nice so again yeah you know you don't know what where you're gonna go until you try it yeah, you know, interview people, have fun, you know, and that's yeah. where people need to understand that you don't have to go a certain way. You can have your own little, you know, your hiccups. You're all going to run into these little bumps in the road, but it's how you react to those bumps to get you from point A to point B. That's what's going to help you and, and mold you into whatever type of content creator you're trying to be in five years' time. So you know I'm saying like, that's stuff you you have to look out for. You know, you don't want any negatives to bring down every single thing. I remember I got into moods like that and I kind of still do where I'm like, uh, I don't even want to upload 
you know, do I even yeah. care about YouTube? Do I want to be a part of it? And then it reflects in the channel with me not uploading. And it's like, yeah, yeah, no. And then I think about it, it's like, you know, nah, I can't, I can't say no. Yeah. Because it's something I've, I've had fun with, you know? Yeah. And it's also like what you said, follow the trends, like do the, do your research. Like I always go on Twitter every single day and I look for news on all the platforms like what is youtube doing what is twitch doing what's hmm. facebook doing like what what are the latest announcements that they're doing and you definitely want to keep up with the market and the industry like you you have to know what's going on in the industry in order to grow your channel so um you know when i went to youtube i i was looking at what the top players so to speak were doing like i went to youtube around the same time tim the tatman did <laughs> and because when he left like there were some big streamers that had left for youtube already but when he left it started this huge wave of people leaving for youtube and i saw that and i was like oh my god i think i think youtube is just gonna like blow up in streaming soon so i decided to leave everyone was like are you crazy you can't leave twitch for youtube so yeah. Definitely went out of my comfort zone on that one. I I was very surprised because people were like, are you insane? You're going to YouTube to stream? Nobody <laughs> watches streams on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. It's it's like that. And um, But that's right. Again, you just have to be consistent and just you'll grow it. I mean, yeah, might be small viewers, even if it's a big title. But all this stuff can go to bigger volumes, uh, depending on just the, you know, the consistency yeah. and and you know the will i guess you can say to keep the drive through that type of stuff but you know a lot of people just don't uh don't look at it like that you know i see low numbers they're like oh see that channel is not good because of low numbers i'm sitting there going uh wrong that channel is doing fine it's putting out more than what you're doing because what you're doing yeah that, you know <laughs> that, that channel's uploading what are you doing oh you're obsessing about that person's views, that person's viewership and all that, but you're not uploading. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And when you upload, okay, you might get some views, but I can clearly tell you, you're not happy with what you're doing <laughs> and you want to do something different. But so yeah. let's pick on this person. Yeah, that's the weird part about YouTube that you're, you'll realize immediately. You know, you have those people that say they don't do this. I won't do this, right? But then when they see you mm. get an opportunity, that that is big they go oh that person is a bad person that person to sell out <laughs> nah there won't be that and then you see them on twitter hey man i would love to have you on my podcast for an interview type of thing i'm like hmm i thought you wouldn't do that type of thing <laughs> so that's the that's the stuff you'll you'll yeah. get into uh, and, yeah and i've, I've grown numb to it because i've accepted it and the same thing goes to what you were saying earlier like people trying to you know use others for x amount of things mm -hmm. that is real uh viper will tell you about that it's a lot of that is definitely real um we've had he's he already dealt with his situation with that but it's it's definitely real and yeah um a lot of people that's do why i was afraid so. to ask you yeah true, See, you, this goes for viper are... to if viper if you're listening to this i'm also <laughs> afraid to ask you but not because of, you're like we're friends too but i'm just i don't want to feel like he's i don't want him to feel like i'm using him yeah, no, no, but that's the difference. But see, the thing about that versus where, like, you asking me, right, or another small content creator asking me, I mean, again, I don't really feel pressured at all by that type of things because I kind of already see just based off a of character, you know? Like, you know, I don't, I, don't just, I don't just show up in your chat and say, hey, what you playing? I ask, you know, about you. I say, what yeah. you doing? What you updating? You know, I always check on the person streaming, not the game. You know, it's that, mm -hmm. and that's, and, and that's not, and that's just me to get a, you know, kind of get like a, a feel of who I'm, who, who I'm talking to, like who, who we, who we hanging out with, you know, and that's the type of thing, you know, a lot of people just don't do. They're more, they're more in line with just seeing numbers. Yeah. And I noticed that when I had like a big, like, and Viber can attest to this. I had like this big target on my back. It felt like, and then when I gave up the target, I was like, listen, hey, you guys want them? We take it. But there was this time where I had like 600 viewers watching my show, mm -hmm. 600 live viewers. And I was just like streaming and, you know, being wild, I guess, in the stream, talking about news and everything. And I had all these dudes all of a sudden want to be part of the show. But then when I left that energy, 
and moved on to other things, my viewers went from that to like less than 200 or 100 yeah. times. And those same people are nowhere to be found mm. because those same people did the stuff that I did in the past and are getting that type of traction. It's like, hey, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. One thing about me at the end of those streams, I did not feel accomplished whatsoever. Mm. And you tell me, hey, man, yeah, 600 viewers, great thing. I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> that's awesome and i went and i went and played some games and i'm, and I'm getting bombarded by messages <laughs> hey man can i get on i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know it's you gotta know what you want man you gotta you gotta build the audience that you that you want Have yeah fun. yeah I, and it's funny because like i had a whole plan for you too i was like i'm gonna if i had been on the podcast i would interview him about this i would ask him this i would ask him this but i just couldn't ask you so that was that was the part well, that here, couldn't so know yeah, that what well, you're here mission accomplished, mission accomplished. <laughs> okay so what is something that you had wish that you wished you had done differently with your channel in the past knowing what you know now oh that is very simple um uh so this might sound a little counterproductive for what I was saying <laughs> okay. earlier, but I was a little too nice uh, in my early days when I was getting into bad things, bad habits. I was definitely a little too nice. I think if I had a, like a time machine, I could slap my old self, like my younger <laughs> self in the face. I'd be like, eh, no, 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 no. Like to these things. But um, being a little too nice is definitely a problem in a sense i've learned in this uh, i'm not saying be a jerk to everybody no i'm saying be be mindful be cautious uh, of what you do and what you and who you let on your platform you know what i mean like if your platform let's say you let's say hypothetically my my platform had i don't know a hundred thousand and your platform was just starting right you had three subscribers but let's say i i didn't know you were on negative energy and i give you that platform you know what i'm saying like that mm. is the type of stuff a lot of people don't understand that especially with twitter um i always look at it like this the amount of followers you have is the amount of reach you have in a sense you know what i'm saying whether it be five thousand ten thousand three thousand that's how many people in terms of like you know like of a reach that you have access to through this one little app. And all it takes is word from mouth, you know, from that reach to make X, Y, Z happen. You know what I'm saying? Like whether it be, whether you think it's good, but it can end up being bad, you know, and that's, and that's the thing. So I, I would definitely say be mindful. I would also tell myself to um, definitely um, pull the trigger early on earlier on on things that I didn't want to do at that time. I would have done it immediately uh, at that point. And I definitely would have um, erased certain things. Ironically, though, they say everything happens for a reason, right? So it's all destined to happen a certain way. We all, we're all destined for something. So if I was to do that, I, I probably would never would have met, uh, you know, our, well, our good friend Viper, you know, mm -hmm. Viper knew me back in, in my worst days. And that's <laughs> uh, my brother. So but again, it, it all comes back to that thing. And, you know, I, I would just say, just be mindful. I, I would change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, don't, don't just go saying yes to everybody that asks you right. to do yeah. something like, yeah, don't. Cause as, as soon as I, if I respond to like my DMS that are people just like spamming me links and is like, Oh, can you come follow me? Like I, I would do the same thing. I would, at first I was also too nice i would like respond to these dms and be like oh yeah i'll come follow you and then it's more spamming of like hey i'm live right now and it's just and it's like just spam and weeks later they'll do that stealth unfollow like mm -hmm. yeah and it's like that's what i told you like you have to be mindful yeah and you have to see how these types work i've seen that even with content creation where dudes asking for help in terms of like how to do this how to do that where you get your intros from i'm like Okay, sure. Uh, you know, me being a helpful soul, sure, you can do yeah. this. <laughs> you go here, and then I started noticing some things. They started to sound, act, <laughs> and literally do the same thing I did. And it's, it's, it's like it had no originality. It was literally just word for word. Even when I did spec breakdowns of the consoles, I'm talking word for word, Rebecca. And I was like, wow, no boy. <laughs> he, really, he really watched my video and copied me word for word. 
just yeah. change certain things for himself. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm in that environment. And that's the that's the thing you want to watch out for. But again, I learned and I moved away from it. And it's funny, you know, I just karma, you know, you don't want to you karma will come to those type of people. But yeah, you know, just have fun. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't let that get to you. So uh a channel of your size, what do you think is something that about, you know, channels of your size that you don't think smaller channels know? Um, honestly, believe it or not, it's not a, like, it depends on what you're like, tr like what you're trying to do. Like if you're trying to get industry, let's say industry guests, um, if you're trying to reach out to certain brands, it doesn't matter really the size of the channel. Like I've seen channels that have like 2k subscribers that are sponsored by Manscaped. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. It's like, I tell, like it build the foundation. It's not really the, the, what matters in terms of like the subscriber count. It's just a number. It really, really is. You know what I mean? Like I've, you see it all the time. People who are in the millions of subscribers, they don't look like they're having fun. They don't look like they're happy because a lot of them are not happy. A lot of them have to do a certain character. They have to act a certain way to maintain something that, you know, a livelihood, like a lifestyle now, right? Like look at Boogie2988. He's one of the, he was one of the biggest, most influential content creators. Now, many people despise him because of what he's become now. You know, and that's where, you know, things change. So, yeah. I mean, uh, personally, there's not really, there's not really a big difference between, uh, you know, whether it be 1,000, 2,000, 3, or 4, or 10, it doesn't matter, like, in terms of the, the size of the channel. Uh, you know, it's just really the message, how you present yourself, and the vibe that you bring. Yeah. If, the, if all those things check good, check out to be good, you'd be surprised of who will say yes to you when you make a certain request for an appearance, a request for sponsorship, or an opportunity to be on XYZ. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. So it, you, you'd be surprised. Yeah. So what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about YouTube? And well, and well, when I say people, I mean like gaming channels. Um, the biggest misconception definitely is the fact that people think it's easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. Some people do it in record time for sure. But that's why I say some people are just naturally super good at demanding your attention and entertaining you and, and getting you in, engulfed in that, in that content. So yeah, those types of individuals, those little gems, I guess you can say, right? The PewDiePies and all that, they're good at getting you to click, hit that like button and, and be a part of it. Absolutely. But not everybody possesses that same type of energy. So the fact that everybody might automatically say, oh, I'm going to jump from Twitch and go to YouTube and think that it's going to be an easy ride. They're in for a rude awakening. It's not an easy ride. It's like a dog eat dog world when you're on the YouTube scene. A lot of people are like that. You know, from spamming your chat, like you said earlier, with the whole sub me, sub my channel, blah, 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 to the weird, um, you know, bots and all this stuff. Like, there's, there's so many things you deal with on YouTube. But again, um, uh, it's definitely not easy. Yeah. <laughs> definitely not easy. Yeah, I totally agree. I think people just think that all people do is they just go live and play some games and they're just like oh done okay cool made 100 100k a year you know like but that's not all people do so yeah first of all you have to have certain qualities well, i mean like you said you have to entertain you have you either have to like entertain people hmm. or you have to provide some sort of information like educational value like you know like what you're saying about um like how to guides like yep. people are looking for information when they go to youtube mm -hmm. um and then i lit literally like i had to ask myself because i didn't i didn't really know this answer and i didn't really see anyone explaining it to me so i was like okay self like why why do you go to youtube and i'm like okay well i go to youtube because i'm looking for information or i'm looking for like something funny i'm looking for entertainment mm -hmm. so you have to have one of those two things if you're gonna grow your channel 
on yep. YouTube, which I think a lot of people don't realize. Like, they think that people just g go on live on stream and they don't even say anything. They just play a game and yep. they just they get paid. They're going there for music or they're going on for this. No, 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 no. They go there for a certain purpose. We all yep. go there for a certain purpose, you know, and that's really it. Uh, yeah. Once you figure that out, then you know, okay, and you think you can contribute to that way or in some capacity, boom, you know, uh, go for it. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, like you said, people jump platforms because they think it's going to be easier. And the platforms, I think people have to remember, like the platforms, they're just tools. Like you still yep. have to be a good content creator. You have to provide entertainment. You have to provide education or whatever yep. your content is. Um, I mean, it's you can't up to upload one video a week and think it's yeah. going to give you some crazy, <laughs> crazy results. No, 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 no. Especially depending on the, the field or medium you're going for. If it's gaming and you're like, hey, I'm just going to talk about a, a piece of gaming news that I don't like for one video once per week. Uh, people are going to just literally look at that and go, hmm, okay, so you're just a negative Nancy. <laughs> Kick rocks and, and go to somewhere else that's going to be consistent with that type of thing that's going to be you know up to date with that type of stuff that's what people love they love up to date you know um whether it be updates on news situation you know i read a case maybe people love the content that is just non-stop mm. if the content is non-stop where they just feel like they're getting their money's worth it's kind of like you go to an amusement park right you get your money's worth on the rides the attractions once they feel like they got their their money's worth, they will continue to keep coming back. Why? Because they know they're going to get everything they possibly want. But this is the dangerous side about this. It's about building the the right audience for you that you want to uh, entertain and not just like a mixture and clutter of goods and bads. You want something that's good for you. And, you know, and that's going to benefit you. So that's why you have to, have fun with that type of thing. You have to experiment with that and see what, you know, where you would rank among those things and take those loops. Yeah, exactly. Very good advice. Please listen to Bit. I, I go to him for advice all the time, even though it makes me uncomfortable. Because <laughs> once again, I just don't want him to think that I'm using him for stuff. I know I'm, I feel like I'm saying this a lot, but I'm, that's just how I feel. <laughs> Okay, oh. so uh, <laughs> I am out of questions. So, Bit, is there anything else you'd like to say or bring up? Uh, hmm, you're out of questions. See, see how easy that was? <laughs> you, you, you see how easy that was? You see, you see how easy that was? I mean, the easy part is asking you the questions. The hard part is thinking that you think I'm using you. <laughs> That's uh, the hard part. Okay, you see how easy this is, Rebecca? You see how easy this is? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, question for Rebecca. Is Rebecca going to ask more people on the show? <laughs> is she? Yes. I'm going to ask. I am going to ask more people. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily going to be channels of your size. Because <laughs> this, this one was hard enough. <laughs> well, <laughs> again, have fun with it. Grow it. Uh, okay. You know, more, more confident on the mic, you know that whole shebang. I'm mad. I had to take my like, like if I had, if I could put the stream back up, I would. But I actually had to delete it. Uh, it's an old stream I did where a uh, developer, she's a good friend of mine now, um, literally a good friend. But I had her on here. She's from Sony. She worked for Sony Santa Monica. I just worked on no more, but. It's my first interview, big interview in a long time, and I literally am choking on my words. I'm talking, I'm not, I don't sound confident on the mic. I don't even sound like I'm prepared at all. I had topics that I was going to write down. I didn't even write down. I had them in here and literally I'm just falling apart. The chat's like, uh, what did you say? And, like, <laughs> and I'm repeating myself. So again, that's me being nervous. That's letting me, that's letting nerves get to me type of thing. But I learned. And as I got with more and more experience that, uh, Really, that's just, a, that's just a mental block at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, yeah. you enjoy it. Enjoy the moment type of thing. Um, I know. I know. I know like, enjoy the moment. <laughs> I, know, I know, like, objectively, it makes sense that you wouldn't say yes to coming on the podcast if you didn't feel like if, if you felt like I was using you, you wouldn't agree to come on. And I, I know objectively that makes sense. But 
just in my head i just still am always worried i don't know we might have to look at rebecca now we might have to stare at rebecca differently i don't know what's going on here <laughs> so, but no um aside from that um are you doing more shorts is more shorts going to be in your future are you going to do that you know you going to continue to do that because i'm already getting on the bandwagon i'm, I'm just saying you might want to continue Get yeah back on that sure. i actually love shorts and i try to post one every day so i'll grab a bunch of clips from my streams or, and i also started turning the podcast into shorts and you know. i'll go back and watch a podcast episode and i'll grab clips of what i think is interesting and I put those up as short. Some of those do really well, too. And like I said, I think I get most of my subscribers through shorts. So I think they're really great for visibility you, of your channel. I tell you, though, that tells you. You did tell me. You're doing good. That tells you that you're doing good <laughs> with it. But that's telling you that people like you or liking your content for that. So keep feeding that content yeah. to them. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be surprised uh, how many people hit that like button, you know? I noticed you got a lot of likes on those videos too. So a lot of people yeah. did like and was like, yo, this is really, really good. Again, that goes back to what I said. That's the audience you want. You want that evergreen content. You want that stuff out there. You want that audience that's going to be like, you know what? I like her. I like her. She, she's going to give me that type <laughs> of video. She's not going to give me these videos. She's going to give me these type. You know, they're creative and fun and, and giddy. There you go. Yeah. And, and, you, and you connect with them uh, that way. Through, yeah. I think you know. people really are, even now, are still underestimating shorts, even though YouTube is really pushing them hard. But they've done a lot of improvements. Like shorts now, they're monetized now. Um, yep. They also are connecting to long form. So, like, shorts will um, recommend long form. And then they've also got the live ring. So, if you're live and somebody, comes across your short the short will show that you're live and somebody might go check you out like i have a friend lil p and he did an experiment where he posted a short right before he went live mm -hmm. and he said a lot of people came in because they were like hey i saw you were live like i saw your short and i saw you were live and i came in mm -hmm. so it's like it's starting to connect to everything else on youtube yeah like these things um are they they go hand in hand and people need to look at that. Now, I say this, and this is why, again, when I say, and not everybody is, is, is going to work for everybody. You know, I've seen people who build such a negative reputation <laughs> for themselves that they made a short. And I'm talking their channels are bigger than, um, you know, bigger than Rebecca's here. And I'm talking somewhere like in the, I think one particular one was like in the 9,000 subscriber range and only got 76 views on the short because of just his negative yeah. reach. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Negative energy. A lot of people just called on to like, yeah, I'm not clicking that. I know you. <laughs> I ain't clicking that. I ain't yeah. clicking that. Hey, I'll click Rebecca. So, you know, she's, she's bringing that positive vibes. Again, I don't know why people do this. I mean, I kind of get it because they, 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 it kind of goes back to that whole using people and getting into that thing. They want to be part of that energy, that, that, that conversation, that, that, that quote unquote, what they think, what they deem as the cool guys or cool kids mm -hmm. table. But the reality is they're not doing anything. Like it's, it's, it cracks me up because I've, I've taken so many steps. I mean, I just turned 30 last year. I'm about to be 31 this year. So I literally took so many steps back. It's like, and, and you know, I was talking to people about this. It was like, dude, once you hit your, th once you hit 30, you know, stuff don't bother you no more. I was like, you know, you know, we'll talk. Yeah. It kind of don't bother me as much when I think about it. It really don't bother me. But <laughs> that's the, that's the vibe. Uh, you don't want to be in that, you don't want to yeah. be in that conversation. You want to be yeah. in your own bubble. You want to grow, have your own thing. And as you go, these things uh, can turn into bigger things. So Yeah, it's almost like scammers. Like they get a follow out of a person and then they just move on to the next person. Try again. If they don't get a follow out of that person, just move on to the next one. Yep. Don't check in on you. Don't even so much say hello. But hey, I got three subscribers. I'm talking to Rebecca. Hey, well, on to the next year. <laughs> yeah. Back and fine. That's literally the the weird thing people do. Just like they, I had some weird messages before. He was like, hey, man, I'm a big fan of yours. And I was wondering, can you come on my show and I can come on your show? And I'm like, 
no. Yeah. No. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I don't even know who you are. And it's like, that's the thing. Like people are just, just yeah. You know, they don't think, they don't think for they type, you know, put the work in, you know, build the foundation. So that way, it, ironically, me me telling you to do this, it it helps the future people that you might ask when you feel comfortable to ask the bigger mm. content creators out there. When they see what you're doing, they see what your your track record of how many people you've had on, um, whether it be bigger content creators, smaller content creators, and what you're talking about, your topics, et cetera, et cetera. They see that and they're like, oh, well, I got no problem with this vibe. This is a cool vibe. I can sit down and talk to yeah about or what and that's where you want that's why i say like you want to build the foundation and have everything you know ready to go before you start opening the doors and letting people in you don't want to build a foundation when people are in there you know what i mean you want to build it you know around it before you you start really opening that door and that's where you know it's the same thing here i just have fun with it yeah yeah we we talked for a while you know, before we, mm -hmm. and I've been on your podcast, so it's, you know, we talked yeah. for a while before we even considered each other to be on each other's channel. And, you know, you wouldn't have asked me onto your channel. Like you said, you don't want to just have anybody on your channel. Well, I knew I was doing one. I was like, <laughs> I knew I was doing one. I was like, hey, she's cool. And yeah. like, who's Rebecca? I'm like, oh, you'll love her. She's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you were you were quiet for most of the show for sure yeah well it, it was see it was not a lot to you didn't know much about the, the topic yeah but. see it, it was just a bad situation because the topic <laughs> was mostly about xbox news and i have never been an xbox person i grew up on playstation and nintendo so i was like okay bit, you gotta ask me on another episode because i cannot contribute <laughs> to this <laughs> but you feel right in though when we got into yeah. the uh playstation yeah topic. so you were you're fine in this yeah sense, i mean so. i enjoyed being there i just like couldn't contribute very much because it was just something that i didn't know much about but that that was the only issue and um so another yeah. example is like when i was on tube talk i was in an even smaller channel than i am now and I don't know like how you know many times I was commenting and tweeting on Viper's tweets and the vidIQ tweets and it took a long time of me interacting with Viper before he ever asked me on Tube Talk. You know and yeah. then you know you and him are old friends so he you know asked you on Tube Talk yeah. no problem. When he asked me on uh Tube Talk cuz you know he was just blown away cuz he was so proud. He was hitting me up left and right and and everybody was hitting me up about you know being so proud about what I did in record time cuz they see me when I tell you I was uh, I was not this crazy humbled sweet person that you you see here on the camera like I think I was like at my worst a lot of people saw me at my worst where I was mm -hmm. like yo I don't like you get out of my face like, I was on that energy like every day with content creation I, I did not want to be around it but when they saw you know which is where I, I still have it on my Twitter you know it's a highlight of my life you know being working with IGN having my name and something I worked on be featured and something like that. Um, you know, being there, being featured again by them as a curator for IGN playlists, all that stuff. I was like, wow, this is something I did in record time. Yeah. So that stuff was really, really cool. Yeah. So these things are great. So that's why I was like, you know, if, if it didn't really feel awkward with me talking with Viper, because it was like two old friends come together and just uh kind of like. I guess talk about the the, the past in a sense, and that's really yeah. what it was. But and we you know we didn't talk about the past. We talked about the future. That's all. I always love talking with Viper. We don't just talk about things we did before. We talk about what's happening in the now. We don't really live in the in the past, and that's why I love about Viper and what he does too. And I'm happy that he got with two uh, with um with uh, uh, Vid IQ. I'm glad he's over there because he deserves that. He's a mm -hmm. genuine person. Yeah, I love seeing people like that get to those strides and hit those strides and and reach those type of things so it's always cool to see yeah so i'm proud of him proud of everything he does me too he is yeah he like you said he's very genuine he just he loves helping people yep it's just so it's really nice to have that in this whole industry of oh, when yeah. you know we just talked about people using each other yeah. uh, okay so not everybody's like that not everybody's like no that. not everybody's, not everybody's like, like that, that. everybody's like that <laughs> But there are some gems you will run into. Yeah. But not everyone's a gem. <laughs> so yeah, yes. Please watch out for yourselves. Exactly.
All right, so um, Bit, I will have all of your links in the description. So please, guys, go check Bit out. He does a lot of gaming news. So if I want to know something about a new game coming out, I the first thing I'll do is go check his channel because he <laughs> he covers all the latest gaming news. Oh yeah, we do it on our uh, we do it on our show, our podcast called RGT, stands for Real Gamer Talk. Uh, we literally sit down and literally talk about games have fun and chill and that's been our whole uh stick so that's what we're known for um and you also awesome. live stream games so what uh, are you playing yeah. now well i just uh finished hogwarts legacy so i got the platinum trophy in that did nice. everything in the game it was awesome uh one of my favorite games so far of this year um, wow and it's only march <laughs> Oh yeah, it's fantastic. And my the, ironically, the game I have my eyes on the most because I'm a big Spider-Man fan. So obviously Spider-Man 2 is, is mm -hmm. high up because I love 2018. When I when I played 2018, I was sitting there saying to myself, I was like, damn, I actually lived to finally get to see what we saw in the Tobey Maguire scenes <laughs> in video game form. And it looks so badass. I was like, yes, yeah. finally, I get to see this. And it's like, I can't wait to see uh, what we get on PS5 and everything in the future. And yeah. you know, PC, you know, it's, it's the other thing that's opening up. So pretty much it's it's good for everybody. Everybody's gonna yeah. be getting a lot of um, great things. So what else do you have coming up? Feel free to plug anything else that you would like to or whatever you have coming up. I mean, tomorrow show, you know, that's what we'll be doing uh, Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's what we'll do. We'll talk about whatever happened this week that I probably didn't cover. So we'll definitely be doing that. Ironically, I have not uploaded anything this this week because I, I have my eyes kind of set on this John Jones versus Cyril Gunn <laughs> uh, fight. So I haven't really been really paying attention. Like, I've really been doing more homework and uh, doing... Uh, like some like some articles that I'm writing for Lognet or Lords of Gaming.net. That's where you also can find me. But uh, I really just, you know, that's what I love about it too. Again, the audience that I build there, they understand. So I literally take these breaks in between uploads and I'll write an article or work on something behind the scenes. And then they know it's something big or something cool when like I make an announcement on Twitter. Hey, listen, we got this person coming through, that person. Um Still blew my mind that last year um, I linked up or linked in with one of my idols from my uh, in the gaming industry. Oh, nice! And that's um, and that's Jeff uh, Jack Trenton, who is okay. the CEO of PlayStation. Nice. So, so I mean, again, it, things happen. Uh, you yeah. Just take the take the leaps. Uh, yeah. Gonna hopefully get. I'm gonna hopefully try to get Jeff Keeley. <laughs> on one of these shows this yeah. year maybe not because he's super busy but that's another awesome dude who's linked up so that's awesome but we'll see but we'll fingers yeah. crossed we'll see <laughs> <laughs> okay well we'll hope that you'll get him on and thank you so so much for being here a bit um you know it was hard for exactly. me <laughs> to have you on but i'm so glad that you came on i'm really really happy that you did this so see, oh, but now, God. now you've opened the door and now I'm, now I feel like I can ask you anytime <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to ask you uh, on again. like a hundred more episodes. Anytime. <laughs> uh, the pleasure is mine. It was a, it was fun. I had a blast and uh, I will definitely come through more often. Sure. <laughs> okay. So, awesome. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Please go all check right. all of Bits links out and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.